Yoo-hoo! Or should I say, ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas and Happy Hanukkah! And I hope you had a fantastic day yesterday on Christmas Day. If you're listening to the day after Christmas, I am so excited. I'm full of gratitude today. Uh, I don't know if you're exhausted, if you're empowered, if you're exhilarated, but I know you're listening to this right now, and I'm so excited to share uh, with you today. As a matter of fact, before I get into uh, today, I'm going to... I'm going to share from the soul today. I'm going to share some of my bad habits, best practices, and and some of the big lessons of the past uh, 365 days of 2022. But uh, I want to start with saying thank you. I want to say thank you to every single one of you. Whether this is the first time you're listening to the Todrick and Impact Show, or this is the 300th time you're listening. I don't even know what episode we're on. It's a lot. And uh, so many people reach out and say thank you. I want to say thank you to you. As a matter of fact, just before we got rolling, my man, the man who's been behind the scenes of all 2022, Brandon Bournes, uh, my videographer, uh, cinematographer, uh, Brandon Bournes, just said, hey, TD, thank you. Thank you for... uh, you know, just recording because it's an honor to uh, to put out good content. Folks, it takes a team. Guys like Brandon, Julie Wilcox, Amelia and Johannes, uh, our mastermind team. Um, it, it takes a team of people to get stuff done. And I'm so grateful, number one, that they can help me produce this show. And then at two, we have loyal listeners like you that listen and then share the good news as well. I know this as I get ready to uh, fire up 2023. Does anyone else share in the excitement for the new year? I can't wait to put 2022 to bed. I spent over 10 hours literally on my uh, annual strategic plan thus far. I'll spend more time this week coming up. I'm just getting excited about what is to come. I'll share more of that next week uh, on the 2023 edition. But uh, I'm really, really excited about uh, all that is to be and uh, and to happen. So again, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, uh, Happy New Year in advance. Uh, and if you, it's not too late. I'm gonna one more time. It's not too late if you're still searching for those great gifts and you're looking to plan your year. Now is the time. Not too late. Get your GSD Planner 2023. Uh, again, I've shared uh, over over 10 hours I've spent uh, looking back and also looking forward. And uh, if you haven't yet started, you're not behind. You can get that at any time in the year. Um, one of the parts of the planner is the strategic plan. I'm going to share some of that with you today with my bad habits, best practices, and my lessons. Um, just realize this, when you get your planner and Several of you already have your GSD Planner 2023. It does include your annual strategic plan, but it also includes um, your your whole system. My system that I've used now for over a decade, your 10 forms of wealth, your 3 and 30, uh, your W lags, your monthly, weekly, and daily scheduler, along with your action steps and your to-do lists. So when I talk about in the Impact Journal, dominate your day, this is your actual schedule from the time you wake up to the time you go to sleep of how do you best organize your time, energy, and efforts so that you're putting uh, your energy toward things that matter most. So your your GSD Planner 2023 is going to help you do that. So if you have not yet um, ordered that, order it up. And if you're still looking for gifts for your loved ones uh, post-holidays here, uh, they're still available. It'll be available year-round. But this is the perfect time to really dive into um, your own roadmap, your own strategic plan of what you want to do for your life, for your business, for your relationships. And that's the beautiful thing about that. It addresses all of these things uh, in your life. So with that being said, are you ready to dive in? Uh, and here's some more. And and by the way, go to check this out, whether you've already ordered your plan or not. I uh, recorded uh, recently a little special message for you and planning. Go to toddurkin.com slash planner intro. toddurkin.com slash planner intro. And that's going to uh, give you some additional information on how you can best utilize one part of your planner, which is all about your 2023 strategic plan, which now is the perfect time. So what happens in your strategic plan 
uh, is there's actually eight sections of your strategic plan. I'm not going through them today. I'm only going to share a portion of my answers on the first section. And that's a time to reflect on this past year. And I'm going to invite you during the course of this next 20 to 30 minutes or so as we talk, as I get in your head, as you're out moving or you're stuck under the Christmas tree, like dilapidated and tired, and you're still in your PJs. I see y'all. <laughs> That's why I got my Santa's hat on right now. If you can't see me, I'm still in the festive spirit. Uh, it's a time to reflect on the past year. Section two, which I'm currently working on as you're listening to this, creating your vision for an extraordinary 2023. Number th- Section three of the planner, creating your best life. Section four, optimizing peak productivity and performance. Section five of eight, Upping your circle of influence, your environment, and adventure. Section six, optimizing your health, fitness, vitality, and energia. Section seven, deepening and strengthening your relationships. I want 2023 to be epic when it comes to your relationships, whether it be your marriage, your kids, your your family, your your colleagues at work, and section eight, and then some deep thoughts. Going to require some butt glue, but those are your eight sections. So what I want to do today, is this the last episode of 2022? Brandon, I think it is. Julie, I think that this is the last episode? This should be a party. We should have a celebration as if we didn't celebrate enough yesterday at Christmas uh, here. This is the last episode of 2022. Again, thank you all for an epic year. So three of the questions in section one, a reflection upon 2022, three of the questions, I've got 11 questions looking back. Uh, uh, One of the questions says this, what were some of your bad habits or worst practices that you need to get rid of in 2023. So this is kind of a confession again. I feel like the last couple of weeks, I'm like confession time here at the Impact Show. Uh, but for some reason, the comments I see, y'all like when I get reels. So I'm getting reels with you again. Not reels like R-E-E-L-S, like in Instagram reels, but reels like R-E-A-L-S, reels. Okay, it's been a long couple of weeks. <laughs> Happy holidays again. So getting reels, bad habits, number... um. Number one, I want to share with you today, bad habits of 2022. I'm going to keep this short and sweet. Um, Not getting enough body work or soft tissue work. The goal is always two times a month. And I failed. I failed. Um, Bad habit was I didn't employ this enough into my schedule. And soft tissue work is really, really important. Matter of fact, all you body workers, massage therapists, thank you for what you do. All you healers out there, thank you. If you're looking for a great career and you're searching and you love health and fitness and wellness, I think it's a great field that has amazing opportunities in the upcoming future because all of us, every single one of us listening in needs more body work. Can I get an amen on that? Soft tissue work, I didn't get enough. I, I, I need to find that go-to guy or gal here, whether it be a Fitness Quest 10 when I'm on the road, that soft tissue work. I'm talking massage therapy. Along with another one I put down, not enough stretching. Teddy, I apologize. Teddy Bristle, I need to get in more with you for fascial stretch therapy. Ari, I apologize more. Can you please come rip me out, as long as I'm not recording the Todd Durkin Impact Show podcast, come rip me out of my office, and we need to get FST. Not enough yoga. So you can see a lot of my bad habits came around more of the yin. Uh, While I did do uh, a good job on the meditation and prayer and quiet, all that journaling stuff. um, And the other one I just put down here to share with you was uh, sleep. I didn't get good sleep in 2022. Anyone else? Did anyone else not sleep well in 2020? You know, busy mind. I talked last week about overwhelm. It seemed like 2022 as I reflected upon this year, it was a tale of two two years in a lot of ways for me. A tale of two years. I feel like the beginning of 2022 was like a century ago. I feel like I still, the further I get away from the pandemic in 2020, the better. But the beginning of 2022, the first five or six months, I was looking back in my planner from last year and it felt like it was ages ago, not six months ago. And um, I realized that overall, 
too much sleep deprivation. And not so much because I wasn't trying to sleep, the busy mind, and that's why I created this year in the Impact Journal, the evening journaling routine, which I'm now doing. I've done the last three weeks, every night, every day, without fail, morning, five minutes in the morning, five minutes at night, journal. Um, I just didn't get enough restful sleep. So if you're with me on that, write it down. The fact that you write it down here, we're going to next week as we talk about some things you can do to to get your best habits going. That was a bad habit. I I needed to sleep more. And oh, I'm going to throw my wife, Melanie. Well, I won't throw under the bus, but each of these three questions I'm going to ask you today about bad habits, best practices, and goals, I asked Melanie that as well. And Melanie said her, her worst habit was getting on her phone before she goes to bed. Ooh, sorry, Melanie, throwing you under the bus. Uh, and y'all are like, oh, thank God, I do that too. <laughs> y'all are laughing at me. Yep. Uh, I'm glad we can have a little chit chat here in the last week of 2022 because when we recognize our bad habits, then we can do what? We can change them into good habits that will help you do what you want to do, unless you like doing what you want, like you like to do. So, um, Next up, best practices. Okay, I'm sharing three of my 11 questions from section one, a look back in 2022 um, on that. Best practices, um, best practices was movement was better this year. My exercise was better. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a my zone maniac. Yes. Y'all see me with my, my zone on love wearing my, my zone. When I don't wear my, my zone heart rate belt, I feel like I didn't get a workout in. That's part of my just just maniacally like craziness when it comes to movement. Um, I'm not where I want to be with my health and fitness, but I am certainly a lot further along than 2021 when I reflect upon that. And I've got some big goals, which I'll share next week when it comes to my own personal fitness, health, wellness, recovery as well. But I feel very grateful that my movement and exercise way increased because my back, which was last year, wasn't as much of an issue. Uh, Discipline was up big time. And when I say discipline, I did my W lags every week. I never missed the W lags, which again is part of your uh, God Size Dreams Planner 2023. Every Sunday, I ask 15 to 20 minutes to reflect on your last week, wins from the last week, your losses from this past week, your aha moments from this past week, like what were the conversations you had? Like if it's if you're listening the week between Christmas and New Year's here, Hanukkah is in full effect. Um, you know, what were your aha moments, conversations, and then your goals? What are the goals this week? Perhaps you're on mellow yellow time, vacation time. Good. Enjoy that. But whatever your goals are, um, put that down in your W legs. I was extremely disciplined in that. And I also put down journaling. Journaling more than ever. Um, The Impact Journal is out. I've been journaling morning and evening. Um, I've been having my my specific prompts that I follow. I also have a blank journal where I can just like last week when I'm feeling overwhelmed. um, I hope that my my blank journal never goes to the annals of history and anyone ever reads it because like TD, wow, never knew that. That's your journal. That's what you write, what you want to write, and no one's going to read, all right? But it's important that you get that out of every corpuscle of your body. I said corpuscle. Can anyone spell corpuscle? Good, good. That's the kind of festive spirit I'm in is uh, that. So uh, those are some of mine. Melanie said, listening to podcasts every day, and she's been working out four to six times a week all year. Um Melanie, I, I joke around to her because she'll be in the in the kitchen listening to Megan Kelly uh, or whoever else she listens to. And yes, she does listen to this show as well. So Melanie, a good job listening to the podcast. And she did say, though, when I asked her that whenever the kids are around and Luke's home, thank God, love having Luke home uh, for the holidays, is um she always takes her earbuds out when the kids are around because she doesn't want to miss out on a single conversation or something that they might be whispering between themselves. So good job, Mel. So those are the two. And the one thing I would uh, also share with you, I'll throw in some in here, because uh, one of the questions, question four of the 11, it says, what would be two to five of your biggest losses, mistakes, or failures of 2022? Um, Mel and I actually share 
the same answer in this because I would highly encourage you and your spouse or your significant other to do the GSD planner together, at least your annual strategic plan together. Like do it separate, but then share some of your answers. Um, one of the biggest mistakes, failures, or losses from 2022 um, for us together was too many people passing away. And just the last quarter of the year here, um, my good friend, Brett Klicka, I shared this, but uh, his passing of his his wife, Lisa Klicka, major loss, major. So while a lot of people celebrate the joyous season, there's a lot of people who might even be listening in right now that aren't too happy or depressed or down. And I want to send you out intention and prayer and strength right now as we speak um, part of what I've been loving about the Impact Journal is um, question two in your journal in the morning um, routine as I open mine up here is um, my morning prayers and intentions are. I have down here I'm looking at um, Brett Klicka and Maddie, his nine-year-old daughter. Um, Mel and I both share that that too much major loss this past year of people. It seems the last couple of years, major loss. And that certainly brings a new newfound perspective on life, right? And as 2022 um, comes to a close, the poignancy of life has never been stronger. The perspective of what is important um, is crucial. So again, I say thank you um, for you sharing this space with me right now as you listen in on some of our bad habits and our best practices. But also, I want to acknowledge any of your losses as you write down your losses and put them to bed. It actually slows you down and brings a, 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 a almost a, a poignancy of clarity of what we need to focus on in 2023. And that is the purpose of writing it down, literally writing it down or in your computer, writing it down. And the last aspect of today, and uh, in no particular order, I do want to share um, some of my top lessons, some of my top lessons here of 2022, because there's a lot, <laughs> a lot, I guess, I don't know if, if a lot means I've made a lot of mistakes or just the way that um, the year has gone, good and bad, right? Lessons can be good, lessons could be bad, uh, but a lot of lessons. And it seems like uh, the older I get, the more lessons I have, it just gives me more wisdom to share with my kids. And one of the reasons why I do this podcast is to share with all of you and to get great feedback from you of if there's a specific episode that most touched you in 2022, I would love to know which one was it. What was your favorite episode of 2022? What was the favorite episode that most impacted you in 2022? Was there one that when you look back is like, man, this is the one that that really touched me. There was just a space that I was in in, in this point in the year that that hit me at the right time. What was it? So what were some of your top lessons that you uh, learned or that were reinforced in the past year? Think about it. And if you're working out, awesome. Listen to mine. If you're writing and and looking at your God-sized dreams planner and the strategic plan, um, fantastic. But um, this is the last one I'll share with you. But the lessons, um, again, I, I, I can't help but think, I feel like 2022 there was so much oscillation between good and bad, between up and down. I experienced some really, really great victories, but man, there were some epic fails, epic fails and losses and failures and business and personal. And sometimes I'm like, the days do feel long some days. Like, man, I feel like I'm getting my tail kicked. And there are other days where I'm like, whoo, baby, I feel like I am hitting my stride finally. Uh, sometimes it's a day, sometimes it's a week or a month or hopefully not the whole year. But uh, can anyone resonate with that? Like the year, the oscillation in a year, so many swings, the pendulums, ups and downs and ups and downs. And uh, I share that with you because... When I talk about getting your mind right, is how do you experience more wins in 2023 coming up starting next week um, when I share uh, what we're going to do to create an epic, extraordinary 2023? 
we're going to have lessons every darn year. But when I, when I look back, let's dive into some of my top lessons right now. Number one, in no particular order, but it's what I put down here is uh, listen to my gut. Listen to my gut. Um, well, what does that mean? Do you remember earlier in the year, this is part of the first half of the year, <laughs> my gut did not want to do this little sidekick that I got involved with called the strike force. I remember that. <laughs> and we're like, what's the strike force? The strike force was an arena football team that I got involved with that um, I didn't want to really do, but I love football. And I was a little bored. Truth be told, I was a little bored. I love football. I love training athletes. I love the game of football. Um, but I was bored. And my wife, Melanie, talked me into it. Let me throw Mel under the bus. Melanie, it's your fault. She talked me into it. She's like, this is perfect. You could be the GM of this indoor arena football team. I'm like, yeah, but Mel, I'm busy. I'm really busy. My bandwidth, I don't have a lot of bandwidth. She's like, yeah, but you're bored. You can fill it up with football. I'm like, well, it's not the NFL. She's like, but that's why you're doing it because if it was the NFL, it would require a move and we're not moving for the NFL or anything like that until McKenna's done with high school. So I said, yes. <laughs> Didn't I just say last week to say no more often to the things that you don't want to do? I love football. I love fitness. But I said yes to something that my gut said no. And my gut was right because at the end of the year, I, res I resigned. It was too much for a lot of reasons. I loved the guys. I love football, but I resigned. I'm no longer involved with the San Diego Strike Force. Good luck, fellas. I'm there to support the guys, the athletes. Um, but my gut was telling me, TD, don't do this. I know your wife is smart, but um, sometimes your wife or your spouse tells you things that, and they have a lot of wisdom, you ultimately got to trust your gut, which brings me to my second point. If it's not a nine, it's a zero. If it's not a nine, it's a zero. The strike force was a seven, not a nine. I liked it. I wanted to do it. I shouldn't have done it. It wasn't a nine. A nine is like, what decisions are you making right now? That's like, I'd like to do this, but I probably shouldn't do it. Can you take some things off your plate? Like, Get rid of stuff that doesn't matter, that might overwhelm you. <laughs> you remember that from last week? Um, if it's not a nine, it's a zero. So if you're making decisions right now on 2023, if your gut says yes, and if it's a nine, all in, go do it. Then get it done. It doesn't mean it's always going to work out perfectly. It really does. But for me, that was one of the decisions I made early in the year that at the end of the season, end of the year, I was like, nope. I can't continue to put the energy in if I'm trying to change the world through the Impact Show podcast and through speaking and keynoting and coaching. I can't do all of that at the level I want to, to go rock stages worldwide because in 2023, I'm going to Europe. I'm going I'm going to Canada. I'm going throughout the U. Okay, I'm getting a little carried away about 2023 already, but I can't do that and be committed to something that's holding me back as well. Can I get an amen? Anyone feel me on that? So whatever it is, as Brandon and Julie like, give me a thumbs up and they're getting all fired up. Don't worry, team. It's not even here yet. But 2023 is coming soon. So yes, that was a lesson learned. Number three, which is related, do more of what you love to do and less of what you don't. Repeat after me, folks. Do more of what you love to do and do less of what you don't. I know this. I love keynoting. I love speaking. Do more of it. I love podcasting, so do more of it. No, I'm not coming back with the Thursday episodes for those of you that are messaging me. I saw you the other day. I love writing. It fills me up, so do more of it. I love live events, so do more of them. Sorry, team, but we need more live events. Yes, we will be. Big announcements coming soon, early 2023. I love coaching people. Life coaching, business coaching, fitness coaching, God's Eyes Dreams coaching, mastermind coaching, I love when people tell me that my work or the message changed their life. I love when we can get people in a room and connect people that came in through the network and all of a sudden collaboration starts happening and God is in the room and miracles happen. Like literally miracles happen. And that happened a lot in 2022, right? 
So change more lives. I love family time. So get more of it. I love travel. So do more of it. And also identify what you don't love to do and take it off the list, right? What do you love to do? Do more of it. Number four, <laughs> life's too short. Don't wait. Do what needs to be done now. I don't know. Do the things that you want to do more. Trips, memories, conversations, apologies, I love yous. Spend more time doing things that bring you happiness and joy and make sure you communicate that to your team, to your family, to your kids. Just like B-Dog here said before this, saying, thank you, T, I love doing these. Guess what happens when someone says thank you? It lights you up. So let's say thank you more. Life's too short. Number five, a little more business related here. Getting a little sappy on you here at the end of the year. But uh, get outside eyes on your company and that will give you a fresh perspective on how you do things. John Tezza, thank you, John Hannestone. Um, Hannestone, when I got the keynote for them back in uh, October, John Tezza, who is the CEO of Hand and Stone, a massage and a spa, get outside eyes on your company. And I think it's really important. Matter of fact, I recently brought an outside company into Todd Durkin Enterprises, um, and they've really been preparing to throw some high octane fuel on what we will be doing in 2023. So get ready. We're about to proliferate the universe with even more positivity. Yup, yeah, buckle up. That's all I have to say. If you're looking for a little more inspiration, a little more motivation, you want more live events, you want more coaching, guess what's coming, my friends? Yep, I'm not revealing it today. That's not the purpose of the show. But I can tell you this, when you get outside eyes on your company and you say, hey, you know what? Your podcast is really good. But we got to make sure that we don't just pass a million episodes here in 2023, but how do we reach 5 million or 10 million? Oh boy, do I start getting a little cray cray like, yeah, let's talk to me now, Goose. Talk to me, Wayne. Talk to me, Katie. I feel you. You're talking my language now. I'm getting a little excited. I'm not supposed to get excited today. Or am I? Get outside eyes on your company because when other people can help throw some octane on what you do, because if you've been doing it for three years or five years or 10 or 22, guess what? You keep doing things the same way. You keep getting what you always got. And even if it's really good of what you're getting, how do you make it even more impactful? Don't worry. Put your seatbelts on, my friends. It's coming here in 2023. Number six, simplify to amp. Amplify. Simplify to amplify. Yeah, you heard me say that before on a show once before, but it's one of the lessons of 2022 here. I have it as number six because um, one of the talks I gave a keynote for RBC, Royal Bank of Canada, I heard the CEO talk about that. Simplify to amplify. Simplify to amplify. How do you be so good at a few things that you can rock stages worldwide? Takes epic effort. How do you be so good at podcasting that people are clamoring because they want to be part of your show and to share it? How do you be so good at writing that you want to spend more time and that your heart and soul is content when you sit down with no one in front of you to write? I don't know. Whatever it is that you do, those are some things I love to do that that I feel like if I can simplify and put the team around me to do best what they do and I don't have to worry and get overwhelmed about the things I can't control. Like how Brandon does what he does with the podcast. I have no idea how it looks good because I know I don't look good, but he does all this stuff, the teasers, and then Julie listens to it and breaks the tape down and cuts it up and this and that. How do you do Simplify to Amplify? You narrow your role down and proliferate what you do right? I'm not saying you never have to do stuff that you're not good at. I'm not saying that. I get it. Even now, 25 years of doing what I do, there's still things I've got to do that I don't love to do. But I'm saying, how do you put a team around you that's really, really world-class and better than you at what they do? Number seven, Podcasts are powerful and can really impact a lot of lives. It's a lesson that was reinforced this year. And you know how? Because of you. Because of you and your feedback and sharing, I can't tell you how many messages I got, not just saying, oh, TD, great episode, but I'm talking about heartfelt, soulful messages of people who are on the brink of giving it in, 
giving it up. Yep. Some of the guests we had on this year and some of the episodes we had in Real Talk saved some lives. And I mean that in every sense of the word. People who were downtrodden, suicidal, like right now there's in the holidays, people are down and you hear a word or you hold on to something and you keep on going, you keep getting up. What I realized is these dang powerful podcasts are changing lives worldwide and that fires me up. And one of the highlights of my year is when Julie shared that we are nearing a million downloads. Yep, over a million downloads is coming up in 2023. And I got to tell you, to think about a million people listening to the message that's coming through me from God saying, we got this, train hard, eat right, and live inspired, or something that a guest says that you're holding on to, I can't wait to physically give you a hug. Yeah, you, out there running right now, or listening right now, or driving right now, or taking your kids, you're tired, you're exhausted. You just you just shared the gifts of Hanukkah or Christmas with your family and loved ones, and you're tired, and you're scratching your head, like, how do I keep going? How do I get rid of the rat race? I got you, baby. I got you. I'm going to give you the biggest darn hug and high five when I see you at a speaking event or at a conference or here at the gym or around town or at the airport. Give me a hug and say, TD, we got this. Podcasts are powerful. Number eight, be in the room live. Be in the room live. I got to admit something. I'm. A, this is dangerous territory. But then again, it's the end of 2022. It's the last episode of 2022. I hate Zoom. I hate it. I hate Zoom. Seriously, I'm t- sorry, Zoomers. I hate it. <laughs> you know why? Because people have gotten too soft, too lazy, too complacent with Zoom. Oh, let's just Zoom. Let me just, oh, let's just hang in Zoom. And you're out running around, you're shopping, you're, the cameras are off, and you're doing your Zoom. Sorry, Zoomers. I'm sorry. I hate it. (laughs) Okay, I said it. There's parts of Zoom that I like. Okay, there are parts that I do like. But folks, live meetings, live events, live conferences, live, live, live. Narrow the focus. Actually shake hands and kiss babies. So if I'm having a Zoom meeting with you, I love you. I love Zoom. I, I've been doing Zoom talks. Great. Like Zoom keynotes. That's good. But if you really want to make waves, let's connect live. Let's sit down, break some bread. I'll come to your place live and we'll meet. Or you show up live. Sorry. It's just a, a, a lesson that's being reinforced. Let's get away from 2020 and 2021. And, and, and folks, let's start to share, show up again and, 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 have some high fives. I guess I'm too kinesthetic. I guess I'm too, now you're like, preach TD, preach, preach. Listen, if you love Zoom, good. Zoom's got its place. We still have Zoom meetings. That's cool. They're, they're effective. Our team can hop on. We can have meeting virtually. We can have people in Florida or back East. We have mastermind Zoom call. Fantastic. But guess what? You can bet your bottom dollar that we will have live meetings, live retreats, live conferences, live events here at Fitness Quest 10, here at TD headquarters, here. I well, I'm not even gonna re- I'm not even gonna reveal where we're going yet in 2023. It's coming next week. I'll reveal that. I love you, Zoomers, but I hate Zoom too. <laughs> I had to say it, okay? Zoom. It's been good, but it's been bad. Folks. I can't wait to give you a hug and a high five again regularly. Cool. Next, number nine. Look at the team laughing. They're like, like, TD's on fire. They're all laughing at me. Number nine, the power of journaling. I don't even know how many I have. I'm just going to riff here for a little bit longer. Power of journaling. I already talked about it. AM and PM journaling, uh, more prevalent than ever. Uh, My mind has seems to be busier than ever. And we talked about last week about overwhelm. Just start journaling. For me, I realized that if I don't journal... I just, my day doesn't feel as in much control as it should be. So when I say impact journal, dominate your day, dominate your day starts with prayer and meditation and journaling in the morning. And it should end with the same, because if you can bookend your day with gratitude designed to help you attain more peace, joy, fulfillment, gratitude, and happiness. So you can live your best life. 
Journal more. Number 10, there's seasons to life. There's seasons to life. I don't know what season you're in. The beginning of this year was not a good season <laughs> on a lot of levels. <laughs> uh, I realize this. I'm not where I was today. I'm not where I was. And I'm not where I'm going to be. Because where I'm going in 23 is not where I'm going to be today. So if you're in a season that's down, get up. Get up. Let me remind you again. You've heard me the last few weeks say, get up. You've been knocked down nine. Get up ten. Don't get knocked down nine and get up eight. There's a book called The Gap in the Gain. The Gap in the Gain. Sometimes I feel like, you know, I'm in the gap. You got to, sometimes we go through a gap because I'm really, really, really excited. Did I say that? I'm really excited about 2023. I feel like there's this gap to get there of like, okay, all these things that are coming. Can anyone else relate to that? Just keep doing good. Keep focusing on serving today in that. And that for me, 2022 was a season. And it's a season that I'm really excited to get rid of. I think the best coaches in the world sometimes have losing seasons. And I don't know if it was a losing year, but I'm going to say in what will be a new season is I, like you, want to make sure that we have a championship season in 2023. But what happens between seasons? What happens? Let me hear you out loud. What happens between seasons? Every great championship season, if you win the Super Bowl or you have a, a season that goes 1-15, and 15, there's an off-season. You got to have a little downtime, a little off-season. So I'm going to encourage you, like I'm encouraging myself, of get your mellow yellow schedule intact for 2023 now. Schedule, thank you, Wayne Cotton, thank you, of... You have to have off time, down time, mellow yellow time. And maybe it's now. Some of you are on vacation as you're listening in. Please send me a picture of you like with your legs crossed uh, on a beach in Hawaii or you're in the mountains of Montana or wherever you are. You're at the beaches of the Jersey Shore. Oh, wait, it's it's snowing out in Jersey right now. Um, whatever, wherever you're at on vacation, mellow yellow time, send me a picture. This is when all of your best stuff happens. Remember, there's seasons to life, and it starts with getting your downtime, <laughs> which brings me to number 11. Lesson, I need more time off. Number 11, I need more time off. You're like, no, TD, don't, don't take more time off. Well, <laughs> let me tell you something. It's really hard for me to disconnect. Like, even when I'm off, I'm on. Like, my mind is always going, and it, it can never stop. It's, again, back to why journaling is really important for me. Um, mellow yellow time is important, but 2022, I realized this again, confession, forgive me, father, for I have sinned five Hail Marys, three, our fathers. Um, the energy has been more shot at night than normal. Maybe it's because I'm going hard or maybe it's, I don't know, but I know this need more time off. It should, it shouldn't be the eight 30 at night. I'm like, man. Melanie, I'm ready for bed. <laughs> like, God, you're getting old. No. Here's what I'm trying to say. Maybe you're like me, you need more time off. Is I heard Tony Robbins talk about this, and I need to honor it. I need to honor it more of when I be reals with you and very open with you is honoring energy and the schedule to not always be on. Because sometimes I feel a responsibility to be on and to respond to every DM and to every email and to everything because that's also what gives me the spirit and the soul, the oxygen to keep going. But there's time that needs to be off and I need to do a better job in 2023 of scheduling that time off and honoring the time off so that it's not 24-7, 365. So when I talk about their seasons to life and more time off is making sure that disconnect time is. And again, maybe my lessons speak to you and resonate with you, or maybe not. But part of the beauty right now in this last week of 2022, as I'm spending more time on my planner, is if I don't plan it, guess what? It's not going to happen. It's not gonna change. I'll keep doing and doing and doing and be more burnt out like I was really burnt out early in 2022, which is stemming over from 2020, 2021, trying to save the world and everything else. And you're probably like me, a little tired, a little a little like, man, I need a break, I need a break. Well, let's use these next few weeks to make sure that we get refueled up 
And also, let's make sure we honor that and take more time off if you need it. Number 12, <laughs> can I get an amen, anybody? Amen. They're all like, yes, hands are up, waving around, baby. Uh, number 12, music is powerful is a lesson. Music is powerful. Motivation is a must. And inspiration is required. Think about that. Wrote that down in, in my planner. Music is powerful. Motivation's a must. Inspiration's required. What does that mean? There's times when I'm working out at the gym, in my home gym, over the ear headphones are on or AirPods are in, and I'm listening to music. And it's powerful. It can shift energy. Music is music to your soul. Motivation is in the head. It's a must. When I say, get your mind right, get your mind right, get your mind right, it's a must. We got to get our mind right. But even that will wane. Inspiration is a requirement that your heart becomes on fire. The inspiration that we're going to do what is necessary to live God's plan. So music, motivation, and inspiration. Powerful, a must, and a requirement. And lastly, to wrap up, I'll give you 13. This is number 13. I shared 13 lessons. 13 of my lessons. I got a lot of lessons in 12 months here of 2022 is this. And this has been a deep episode, and I thank you again for listening. But um, And again, if you found value, please, part of my hope is to really magnify and amplify and proliferate this message throughout the world in 2023 of how do we become more motivated? How do we become more inspired? And most importantly, how do we create more impact? It's because of people like you that can help share this message with your community, your family, your colleague, your friends. Because number 13 is this. My lesson this 2022 as it comes to a rapid close, I wrote down, your soul's contentment is so much wrapped up in doing meaningful work that has you doing your life's purpose. Getting emotional. I'm getting emotional just saying that. Your soul's, like S-O-U-L, your soul, hmm, your soul's contentment is so much wrapped up in doing meaningful work that has you doing your life's purpose. So let's end this year by me asking you this question. What's your life's purpose? What's the work that God has ordained in you? You know, earlier in 2022, we launched the God Sized Dreams coaching program, getting clarity on your calling. What's your purpose in life? <laughs> it's fitting that this year is ending with me asking you your purpose. How do we go deeper on our purpose? Because let me tell you this, I don't care how much money is in the bank account, whether it's zero, five figures, six figures, seven figures, eight figures. It doesn't matter what's in the bank account if your soul is not content if your soul is not on fire. Because when you're doing God's work, when you're doing the work that matters most to you, when you're serving other people, for me, this podcast is one of the things. And it's one of the reasons why I'm getting emotional right now. I'm, I'm emotional thinking about who's on the other end listening in there right now that is resonating, that as your soul goes deeper on your purpose because you found your passion or you're searching and seeking to go deeper on your passion, where you discover your purpose, here in 2023, next week when I come back on fire for you, it's going to be to light up your soul with the purpose that you're doing because each of us have gifts and talents and skill sets in us that the world deserves to hear and receive. No longer hiding behind that facade of, no, now's not the time. No, now's not the right, that all of the other excuses that we might have about the stuff that you hear about, I don't know, I don't know, what is it? Recession, inflation, politics, hogwash. 
No longer. It's your soul's contentment is wrapped up in the meaningful work that you're committed to do because of the crusade that we're going to go on in 2023 that ultimately is going to allow us to create the impact. That's it. Mm. That's inside of us. Can you feel me? You got me? I can't think of a better way to end 2022 than full of gratitude and saying thank you. For my soul is singing because every time that I have a chance to speak with you, especially when we're live, but when you can listen and between your ears, you're filling up with the impact show and somehow it touched you as a mom or a dad or a husband or a wife or a coach or a trainer or a financial advisor or an attorney or accountant or a young boy or girl who's who's searching for deeper purpose or a pastor or a preacher a first responder or someone who's who's trying to figure it all out i'm going to end 2022 with saying thank you from the bottom of my heart for you letting me in your life for one day today or for 52 episodes or for 280 something episodes and what soon will be over a million episodes from the bottom of my heart I say Merry Christmas Happy Hanukkah and Happy New Year I love you I thank you and I'm so darn grateful for everything that's in our lives such poignancy in 2022 and I'm so ready to flip this year and get ready for what will be an epic extraordinary 2023 tune in January 2nd for the kickoff of the new year of the of the new year of where I reveal my theme and my big five all the things I'm asking you to do what's your theme going to be your big five of what are you going to do in 2023? Start to let it percolate as you get your workouts in. Don't wait till January 1st to go sign up for your gym or to re-up with your trainer, your coach, your life coach, your business coach. Declare today that now is the time for impact. I love you. God bless you. And until 2023... Train hard, eat right, live inspired, and go create impact. God bless you and thank you. What a great year it's been and happy new year 2023. Let's get ready to rock and roll. Thank you. God bless.